Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Western Stories. This episode is going to be Romance's rendition of Pagosa. Original air date is August 6th, 1951, and I hope you enjoy. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment, presents for your listening enjoyment, Romance. <laughs> Romance, bringing you the finest stories of the world's greatest romantic authors. Stories of the courage, the devotion, the adventure of love, all strung on the bright thread of romance. Tonight, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum bring you John Meston's unusual romance of the West, Pagosa. For refreshment while you work, for enjoyment anytime, chew a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. The delicious, long-lasting, real mint flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth and freshens your taste. The good, smooth chewing helps keep you feeling fresh and alert. Adds enjoyment to whatever you're doing. So indoors, outdoors, at work or play, enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Wrigley's Spearmint. Refreshing. Delicious. Now, with Bill Conrad starred as Jeff Spain, here is the first act of Pagosa. Riding out of the desert up to the wooden bridge that crosses the Gila River on the approach to Pagosa is the tall, imposing figure of Jeff Spain. A deerskin shirt hangs loosely across his big, heavy shoulders. His body moves with the horse and seems to have no weight to it as he takes the bridge townward, the plank boards roaring beneath him. Bogos is a scatter of faded buildings that grew up around an old desert trading post, and its streets and saloons are generally crowded with thirsty men who have trailed cattle across the desert and down out of the distant hills. It's shortly before noon when Spain rides into town and up the main street. At the end of the street, he notices a small stable and turns into it. What are you doing here, mister? Hello. Do you run this place? I own it. I don't run it. Well, I'm looking for a stable to board my horse in for a day or so. I don't board horses here. Try the St. Charles Corral. I'll pay you a dollar a day and I'll feed him myself. I don't need the money. That's not friendly. But why should I bother? Who are you, anyway? And that's bad manners. Now, don't tell me what's good or what's bad. Look, miss, I'm a stranger here, and the sooner I find the land office, the sooner I'll be out of your way. Well, it's on Cherokee Street, next to the Kettle House. Oh? The food good at the Kettle House? Try it. I'll leave the money in the grain box here. All right, if you insist. I do. And thank you. If there's no one at the land office, go to the Lark and ask for Mitch. Thanks. I shall. After taking a room at the Kettle House, Spain goes to the land office. The door is shut and locked. He looks around, sees the lock directly opposite, and crosses the crowded, dusty street. The place is somewhat smaller than the usual gambling saloon, but obviously popular. What's yours, mister? Man called Mitch from the land office. Mitch Travis. He's in the corner around behind the stairs there with Miss Teal. Oh, well then, maybe I better wait. Teal Travis. His sister, she owns the lark. Thanks. Hello? Oh, it's you. Seems like you own a lot of things in Pagosa. One stable for pleasure, one saloon for profit. Mitch, this is Mr. Uh... Spain, Jeff Spain. How are you? Sit down. Sit down. Thank you. Uh, can I buy you a drink? Not for me. 
and Mitch has had enough. Oh, Nat Teal, don't know I wanted tickets. to talk with you about filing a land title, Travis. Maybe we better go over to your office. What you want to file on? My partner and I got a little spread about 100 miles west of here. Pardon? It's Cy Quill. He's waiting for me back on the trail. Doesn't like town much. All right. Look, come around in the morning. I'll fix it then. But can't we do it today? I'll come around early in the morning. I'm pretty sober then. I sleep in back. I'm going now. Bye, Teal. Spain. Well, now you know Mitch. Yeah, no business of mine. Unless it interferes with filing my title. It won't. It uh, must be hard for you, though. Yes. That's why Dad left the lark to me when he died. He knew Mitch couldn't run it. You seem to be doing all right. I make money. But I envy you, Spain. I envy you your little spread about a hundred miles west of here. I understand. Who are you, anyway? Well, I'm a cowman. You run a ranch. You said that. But there's something about you. I think I've heard your name. I used to be a peace officer. Gunfighter on the side of the law. You're not wearing a gun now. I changed my profession two years ago. I killed till I got against killing. Mm. You're a strange man. I wish... Well, I wish you luck. Thank you. You must excuse me now. I have work to do. Of course. Good day. It's evening. Spain is standing by the window of his room in the kettle house, watching the crowd move endlessly in its search for pleasure and violence. Who is it? Duke Reese. I want to talk to you, Spain. All right, come in with both hands straight in front of your shoulder high and come in slow. All right, that's enough. Now turn around. Hmm. All right, you can put him down. You're cautious, Spain. What do you want? I want to give you a job. I got a job. I know, but this pays better than raising cows. You know a lot, mister. Who are you? The county commissioners will tell you I'm the district attorney here. I see. What else? I'm the law in Pagosa. And I appoint sheriffs and I fire them. Yes, I know the story. <laughs> You should, Spain. Why'd you leave Abilene? Too many men were dying there. They'll die here. You're well known, Spain. Who told you I was in town? Mitch Trappers mentioned it. All right, you found me. Now get out. I'll put it briefly. As Sheriff of Pagosa, you'll get $500 a month and 25% of the take. You and I will run this town together. All right, 30% of the take. They told you wrong about me, Reese, if you think I'd be interested in a deal like this. I'm firing the present sheriff in the morning. I won't help you. Spain, I need a man of your reputation and ability too much to let you go. Come to my office tomorrow night. I'll explain the details to you then. Good night. <laughs> It's morning. The town of Pagosa lies exhausted but beneath the long, streaming sunlight. Spain enters the land office and goes to the back room where Mitch Travis lies asleep in his bunk. Mitch. Mm-hmm. Mitch. Come on, wake up. Wake up, Mitch. Oh. Oh, it's you. Yeah. Come on, it won't take long. Uh, what, what do you want, Spain? Let's get it done, Mitch. I want to file the claim and get out of here. No, Spain, I, I can't do it. What's that? I just can't do it, that's all. Who said you can't do it, Mitch? I just can't do it. There's been a delay. I, I... Who told Matt. you not to do it? Uh, Show me. Tell me, Mitch. Uh, Teal. Teal. Teal said no. Teal? She said maybe we can fix it later. Not now. All right, Mitch. Uh, but you stay here till I get back. Spain crosses Cherokee Street, enters the lock, and goes to the bar. At one end, a couple of men ravaged by the long night stare dumbly at an empty bottle before them. 
A lone bartender's on duty, polishing glasses with a slow, fanatical care. Where do I find Teal Travis? She's upstairs. Which room? End of the hall, but uh, I wouldn't bother her so early if I were you. I'll chance it. Jeff Spain. I just got up. What do you want? Open the door, Teal. Yes? One arm holding a bright scarlet robe closely about her body. Teal stands in the doorway. A touch of sleep is still on her, softening her cheeks, loosening the arrangement of her hair. Her soft hazel eyes look uncertainly into Spain's, checking his anger. I'm sorry for this, but I must talk with you. All right. Come in, then. Mitch is weak. Drunk and weak. He'll do whatever you tell him. Yes. Yes, it's true. Why did you tell him not to file my title? Can't you file somewhere else? My land lies within the jurisdiction of Pagosa. I must file it here. Then wait. Wait a little. Maybe later... Dale, you must know I'm not a man to accept that. It'd be easier if you tell me the whole story. Duke Reese wants you to be sheriff here. Yes, I know. And unless you go along with him, you won't get your title claim filed. I see. Teal, yesterday you said you envy me my ranch. You remember that? Yes, I remember. You know, I can't figure you, Teal. What's your part in this business? I can't tell you. How is it? Are you in love with Reese? No, get out. Get out of here. And you're not in love with him. Good. <laughs> I hate him. She stands there, swaying slightly. Her fingers covering her eyes until Spain steps close to her, gently presses it to him. Then she looks up, her eyes brimming and filled with wonder. He suddenly bends over and kisses her lips. Jeff. Jeff, go away before it's too late. There have been men like Duke Reese before. I can handle him. But, Teal, what's his power over you? You can trust me, too. It's because Mitch is drunk and doesn't always know what he's doing. Duke tricked him into filing some crooked land titles, and now he could send him to prison any time he wants. I see. So now I go to work for Reese or I don't get my land. But Jeff, Jeff, what can I do? You do what you have to do. I'll handle Reese my own way. But how? I don't know yet. But T will try to remember this. What, Jeff? Reese isn't a man to give up easily. There'll be trouble. But I won't do anything that doesn't have to be done. Try to understand that when it happens. All right. All right, Jeff. I'll try. And when this is over, Teal, I'll be back. Now, where'd I find Duke Reese? <laughs> For refreshment while you work, for enjoyment anytime, chew a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. When your mouth feels dry, when you're warm or tired, Wrigley's Spearmint is really refreshing. The lively, full-bodied, real mint flavor cools your mouth, moistens your throat, freshens your taste. And the chewing itself gives you a little lift, helps you feel your best and do your best. So for chewing enjoyment plus pleasant refreshment, Chew delicious Wrigley Spearmint Gum. And now for the second act of Pagosa, as we return to Romance. It's mid-morning when Jeff Spain steps out of the lock into Cherokee Street. Across the street and a few doors down, he sees a sign neatly lettered District Attorney, and underneath is the name of Duke Reese. Spain walks over quickly, throws open the door, and enters. Well, Spain, I didn't expect you so soon. I always try to be a little ahead of the other man. Yes. Oh, yes, of course. Sit down. I'll stand. You don't like me, do you, Spain? You were going to explain things to me, Reese. 
All right, it doesn't matter. We'll make a profitable team anyway. Now, my offer still stands. $500 a month and 30% of the take. Oh? And how would I earn it? Well, your reputation will earn most of it for you. It's very simple, Spain. For the next six months, I shall want campaign contributions from the gambling halls and saloons hereabouts. I'm running for the state legislature, you know. I didn't know. Yes. And I'm sure everyone will contribute generously, knowing that if they don't, our sheriff will close them down for some good legal reason or other. I'll provide that. Well? Why don't you send for some other gunfighter, Reese? Why? When I can trust you. What's your point, Reese? Just that in six months, you can have title to your land. And I think you want that. And what guarantee do I have of it? You don't need any. In six months, I'm leaving Pagosa. For good. I don't care what happens here after that. And if I refuse? In that case, I won't be able to afford to leave, will I? If I do stay on here, Spain, Mitch Travis will file that title in my name. I see. And he'll file it in my name anyway, if you accept the job, and you and I, shall we say, don't get along. You have till tomorrow morning to decide. Don't be a fool, Spain. We all make mistakes, Reese. A few minutes later, Spain rides out of town, taking the trail towards the chaparral where Cy Quill is waiting for him. There in the shade, they pass the afternoon in talk. And late that night, a pair of riders run in off the desert, put their horses in Teal Travis' stable, and walk back to the kettle house where, in Spain's room, they make their final plans and then go quietly to bed. Next morning, they come out of the hotel and head for the district attorney's office. Reese, this is my partner, Cy Quill. Oh? How do you do, Mr. Quill? Howdy. You still want to appoint me sheriff of Pagosa? Then you've decided? Yeah. Where's the badge? Right here. Good. Now get one out for Cy. I just made him my deputy. What? Give him a badge. I'm not new at this game, Reese, and I always appoint my own men. Well, all right, if you insist. Now go down to the sheriff's office and fire whoever's in there. Get him out by noon. I'll take over then. Now, just a minute, Spain. I'm not used to being ordered around. I can't my... fire your man. Tell him to turn loose any prisoners he's got in there. I don't like another man's leavings. A few minutes before noon, Spain walks alone down Cherokee Street towards the sheriff's office. He now carries a heavy Colt 44 on his hip, slung in a worn hard leather holster. He has the air of a man who knows his business knows it well. He enters the sheriff's office and finds it deserted. At the rear is a door leading out to a half a dozen cells, now empty. With his arm, Spain sweeps a pile of papers off the former sheriff's desk and sits down. Uh. All right, Si. Sure. I give the letter to the stage driver himself. Promise to deliver it personally when he gets to Spring City. He just pulled out. Good. It seemed like a nice fella. <laughs> offered me a free trip any time I wanted to ride shotgun for him. Well, that's mighty generous. Well, Si, let's get started. I'm ready. All right, I showed you where the land office is, and I'll go down there and arrest Mitch Travis. Right. But uh, take it easy with him, huh? I know. Half an hour later, Mitch is quietly asleep in his cell with the help of half a pint of whiskey the Lord's been nursing him with. In the office, Cy Quill is cleaning an oil in a short-barreled Winchester carbine, while Spain sits motionless at his desk, only his eyes alert and watchful. Come in. Hello, Teal. Where's Mitch? He's back there, asleep. Who told you to arrest him? Nobody. Cy and I... Oh, this is my partner, Cy Quill. Teal Travis. You got a lot of partners, it seems, Jeff Spain. No. Yes, I. And to think I trusted you, that I was surer of you than I've ever been of any man. Now, wait a minute, Teal. Just let me explain. What's going on here, Spain? What the devil are you up to? 
What's wrong, Reese? Why did you arrest Mitch Travis? I didn't exactly arrest him. He's here, isn't he? In jail? Well, yes. He's in custody. Custody? What are you talking about? Protective custody. So he'll be safe. Safe from what? From you, Reese. All right, Spain. Put your cards on the table. Sure. This morning, as sheriff of Pagosa, I wrote a letter to the governor explaining a few things about this town and about you. Went out on the noon stage. What? Among other things, I mentioned the homestead claim sign I want to file for title on. Until the governor sent someone down to investigate, I said I'd protect Mitch. Keep him from being forced to file any illegal titles. I see. And what would you say about protecting yourself, Spain? You want to try it, Reese? You want to try it now? I'd be a fool for that, wouldn't I? Yes, you would. You're proud, Spain. So? Proud men die as fast as humble ones. Sure, but they die proud. You've double-crossed me, Spain. I don't mind. You're in trouble, man. I won't ask you for the badge. You're going to die as sheriff. That way I'll destroy your reputation as well as you. Sigh. See where he goes. Right. Jeff. Yes, Teal. I was confused and angry. But I'm trying to understand now. I'm doing what I have to do. Remember, Teal? But do you have to sacrifice Mitch? He'll go to prison now. No, I explained his case to the governor. But when he finds out the shock of it... It'd have to come sometime. Now or later. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose you're right. I've been a coward, haven't I? You just did what you thought best to protect your brother, that's all. I'm glad you're here, Jeff Spain. I've been so alone. I'm glad you've come. Except for one thing. Oh? What's that? It's made you a gunfighter again. Yeah. But for better reasons than I had before. The ranch. And you. Oh, Jeff. Ducky's horse headed north. Should we go after him? No, we'll wait. He'll be back. With help. A week passes. Spain is the law in Pagosa. The cowboys quickly learn that while there's a broad streak of tolerance in him, he can be cruel in a tight place, and no one makes the final challenge. Often he is with Teal. Rest of the time he's on the street or in the sheriff's office with Cy Quill. He's not a bad fellow, this Mitch. I mean, talking to him a lot lately. Nothing wrong with him that water can't cure. Oh, there's the stage. Take a look, Cy. Now, come here, quick. It's Clay Yeager. Yeah. I thought he'd gone to Mexico. Where's Reese? I don't see him. Hey, wait a minute. Who's that? I don't know. Wait till he turns around. That's Kitchen. Mel Kitchen. Two of them. Yeah. Kitchen is one of the fastest gunmen in the country, isn't he? Yeah, that's why Reese hired him, I suppose. But I don't understand why Reese isn't here, too. Well, he isn't. What about these two? What's their game, Jeff? That's been used before. They'll stay close together. I might kill two ordinary men in the same fight, but not this pair. They know one of them is bound to get me. And then I'll face him with you. No, thank you, Si, but this is not your profession. They'll kill you. All men die. But all men make mistakes, too. You're a hard one, Jeff. Come on, I'll cut you for deal in a little two-handed blackjack. In the early evening, Spain moves a chair to the porch outside the sheriff's office. He sits there, back to the wall, waiting. His face is expressionless, but his eyes are incredibly watchful. The word travels fast in Pagosa, and the street is deserting. The air seems tight, waiting to be exploding. Half an hour passes. And then down the middle of Cherokee Street come Clay Yeager and Mel Kitchen, walking slowly, about five yards apart. As they draw near, Spain rises from his chair and steps warily to the street, his eyes never leaving the approaching killers. Ten yards away, they stop. Hello, Spain. How are you, gentlemen? You're all through, Spain. Kitchen and I are going to kill you. 
I'm not surprised at you, Jaeger, but I never thought Kitchen here would kill for money. There's no money in this now. It's just for the pleasure. Oh? Uh-huh. Then one of you has taken this pleasure mighty serious. What do you mean? I'll die, sure, but one of you's going with me. Have you decided which one it's going to be? I don't get it, Spain. No man could kill both of you, but I'm faster than either of you, and I'll kill the first man who goes for his gun. Well, gentlemen, I'm ready. But which one of you is willing to die? You made a mistake not deciding this before now. You talk a lot, Spain. You can stop me, Kitchen, but you'll die for it. How about you, Jaeger? Do you want it? Listen, Kitchen. I'll count to three and then we'll both draw. You're a fool, Jaeger. All right, then. You're faster than I am. You at least got a chance. You started... I'm not that fast. But if he throws a shot at you first, I can get him. Come on, Jaeger. It's the only way. Perhaps I can help you, gentlemen. I'll make the choice. You know I can kill either one of you any time I decide. Go on, Kitchen. Don't let him start it. Shut up. He's just trying to throw us off balance. Last you kitchen, I won't die for you. Spain stands there poised and deadly waiting to strike. The two gunmen have made one mistake, and he's waiting for the split second when they'll make another. And then, in his anger, Clay Yeager turns toward Kitchen. As he does, Spain seems only to shrug his right shoulder and dies on his feet. Yeager whirls and draws, but he misses. And his chest is torn apart by two slugs from Spain's gun. He staggers backwards, falls heavily. Spain drops his big cold into its holster as he steps up to Jaeger and kneels by his head. Clay? Are you dying, Clay? Yeah. I'm sorry for that. Tell me, where's Duke Reese? Why wasn't he with you? United States Marshal pulled him off the stage at Spring City. Had a warrant. And that's that. By Spain. At the open window of a room above the lock, Teal Travis stands motionless, staring into the darkness at the far end of Cherokee Street, waiting for a sign that will tell her whether or not her loneliness is over. She stands there until she sees a tall man in a deerskin shirt striding into the light below. At the entrance to the lock, he pauses and looks up, and raises his hand to her. Jeff. Oh, Jeff. Remember, friends, for refreshment while you work, for enjoyment any time, chew a stick of Wrigley Spearmint Gum. There's lots of lively, real mint flavor in it to cool your mouth, freshen your taste, and sweeten your breath. And chewing Wrigley Spearmint helps keep you fresh and alert. You feel better, work better, get more fun out of doing things. So indoors, outdoors, at work or play, always keep delicious Wrigley Spearmint chewing gum handy. For refreshment while you work, or enjoyment anytime, chew a stick of Wrigley Spearmint gum. Romance is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and brings you the greatest love stories of today and yesterday. Tonight you have heard Pagosa by John Meston, starring Bill Conrad with Georgia Ellis and Will Wright. Featured in the cast were Tony Barrett, Lamont Johnson, Tom Holland, Herb Ellis, and Junius Matthews. The narrator was Bill Johnstone. Musical supervision is by Alexander Courage. Next week, Wrigley's Spearmint Gum, the chewing treat enjoyed by millions, will bring you another story enjoyed by millions. Millard Kaufman's unusual romance, Ulithi. Be sure to listen to Romance next week when the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum bring you Ulithi. This is the CBS Radio Network.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.